Welcome to today's webinar, Reducing Sodium in the National School Lunch Program. My name is Adrian Ackroyd, and I'm happy to present on today's topic. In addition to working for the Maine Department of Education Child Nutrition Team, I'm a food-loving registered dietitian nutritionist. As a reminder, this webinar is being recorded, and if you have any questions, please be sure to enter them in the Q&A box in Zoom. Today, we'll be discussing an overview of sodium, current sodium limits for the National School Lunch Program, tips for reducing sodium in the National School Lunch Program, resources available to support sodium reduction efforts, and at the end, we will have time for questions. As a reminder, please use the question and answer box throughout the webinar. Sodium is a mineral that is present in a variety of foods. It's an essential nutrient often eaten in the form of salt. Your body needs sodium for normal muscle and nerve functions. So even though sodium is an essential nutrient that we need as humans, most people, including children, consume more sodium than recommended. Often this is more than double the amount that's recommended. Too much sodium can lead to poor health, including high blood pressure and heart disease. The chart on this slide are the recommended sodium targets for school age children. These are daily total limits. These levels were defined by the National Academies for Chronic chronic disease risk reduction and are recommended in the Dietary Guidelines for Americans. For children aged four through eight, the daily, daily sodium target is 1500 milligrams. Children aged nine through 13, the target is 1800 milligrams. And for children aged 14 through 18, the target is 2300 milligrams. Where can you find sodium? Sodium is found naturally in some foods, for instance, in celery. Um, if you take a piece of celery that's been limp, I'm sure we've all experienced limp celery before, and you stick it in a cup of water and put it in the fridge, before you know it, it's gonna crisp up. And the reason for this is the natural sodium that's found in celery. Sodium pulls in, pulls in water, so the sodium crisps up as it absorbs the water. However, sodium is also used as a food ingredient. Only a small amount of total, total sodium intake is from sodium that is naturally occurring in foods or from salt added in home cooking or at the table. Most sodium in the diet comes from commercially processed or prepared foods, including restaurant meals. Where can you find the amount of sodium in commercial food items? The Nutrition Facts Panel. It lists the amount of sodium per serving in milligrams. So for this product that's listed on the screen, a two-third cup sodium, or sorry, two-third cup serving contains 160 milligrams of sodium. Let's discuss the current sodium requirements for the National School Lunch Program. As a reminder, today's webinar is for the National School Lunch Program, so we're gonna be talking about lunch only. These are not the breakfast requirements, these are for the lunch program requirements. Sodium target 1A was effective July 1st, 2023, and is currently in effect. The limits are less than or equal to 1,110 milligrams daily sodium average for grades K through five, less than or equal to 1,225 milligrams for grades six through eight, and less than or equal to 1,280 milligrams for grades nine through 12. In comparison, the row above shows the sodium limits that were effective last school year. You can see there was a gradual reduction. As a reminder, sodium target 1A is included in the transitional standards for milk, whole grains, and sodium final rule published in February of 2022. The 2022 transitional bridge rule provided schools with short-term standards as they moved beyond COVID-19 nutrition waivers. The proposed rule, Child Nutrition Programs, Revisions to Meal Patterns Consistent with the 2020 Dietary Guidelines for Americans, published in February of 2023, aims to provide schools with long-term, durable nutrition standards in line with the latest nutrition science. USDA plans to develop a final rule based on the feedback they gathered during the public comment period, and that final rule should be published in 2024. You may be asking yourself, what does daily sodium average even mean? The average allows some days to be higher than others throughout the week. Let's talk through an example. 
So he, here we have a K-5 weekly menu. On Monday, the offering is 1,000 milligrams of sodium. Tuesday, it's 1,200 or 1,200 milligrams of sodium. Wednesday, it's 1,100 milligrams. Thursday, 1,000 milligrams. Friday, 1,200 milligrams. As a reminder for K-5, uh, the sodium limit is less than or equal to 1,110 milligrams. And if you look at that week and you average the amount of sodium over the course of the week, you actually average out to 1,100 milligrams. So you can see Tuesday and Friday was over 1,110, but taking the average for the week actually brings the weekly average down below that requirement. The, allow the average allows some days to be higher than others throughout the week. Here is another example looking at two days worth of lunch menus for a K-5 school. As a reminder, the daily sodium average for lunch for this grade grouping is less than or equal to 1,110 milligrams. Here's the sample menu for day one for a K-5 school. 1% chocolate milk, which has 220 milligrams per serving. Two ounces or two slices of whole grain rich bread. Whole wheat bread here is 300 milligrams for both slices to together. 0.5 ounce or one slice of the USDA commodity, commodity American cheese is 135 milligrams. 1.5 ounce equivalent of the USDA commodity deli ham is 348 milligrams. One cup cucumbers is just about three milligrams. One apple is just about two milligrams for a total daily um, sodium milligram content of 1,008 milligrams. For day two, we have pizza day. Um, you have your chocolate milk at 220 milligrams, one slice of whole grain rich pepperoni pizza, which credits as a two meat alternate to grain is 580 milligrams of sodium. Two cup garden salad with a one ounce ranch dressing um, cup is about 360 milligrams of sodium, give or take, depending on the brand of uh, ranch dressing. And then one cup of watermelon is about two milligrams of sodium. This total is 1,162 milligrams, which is over that 1,110. But when you average it with day one, it actually brings you below um, the daily sodium average limit um, for a two-day average of 1,085 milligrams. As a reminder, blended age group menus must use the youngest age group sodium requirement. For instance, K-12 schools would need to meet the K-5 average when serving the same menu to students. Now let's walk through some tips to lower the amount of sodium in the National School Lunch Program. Tip number one, incorporate more scratch cooking. As a reminder, most sodium in the diet comes from commercially processed or prepared foods. When we were going through the menu earlier, you could see that the cucumbers and the apple and those things were very, very low in sodium where um, the more processed foods like the pepperoni pizza tended to be higher. So preparing items from scratch allows you to control the amount of salt in the meal and you're typically using lower sodium um, items in that food prep to begin with. In Maine and across the country, there was a strong push with support to schools and efforts to add more scratch cooking and whole foods into the National School Lunch Program. Grant opportunities include money for equipment, equipment to help um, support scratch cooking, money for local foods and whole foods, um, healthy meals incentive grants, and full plates, full potential grants. There are so many training opportunities, it was hard for me to pull <laughs> pull a sampling because there was just so many to, to choose from. And we'll talk about more, um, more about this in a bit, but just on a high level, you know, we at DOE have hands-on culinary trainings and reportings available on our website. Let's Go does a culinary skills for school training. Main SNA conferences have training opportunities um, for scratch cooking. Uh, SNA ANC is in Boston this July, which is really exciting. And I know they have culinary demos and training. And the Culinary Institute of Child Nutrition has a plethora of training opportunities as well. And as a reminder, culinary training is an allowable use of food service funds. So for those who um, might have balance too high or spend down plans, um, keeping in mind that training is an allowable way to use those funds. And we're going to have links to these resources later on in this webinar. 
Another idea to lower the amount of sodium in your National School Lunch Program meals is to experiment with spices to pump up the flavor of meals. Maine DOE has a flavor shakers video on our culinary classroom site that focuses on adding flavor without sodium. The Institute of Child Nutrition has a great poster with spice blend combinations. It is in ratio form, which allows you to scale up or down depending on the amount needed. More information on this resource can be found on the ICN website that's linked here. How can spice blends be used? Spice blends work great on the following, um, and this is very, um, a small sampling on how you can use spice blends, but some ideas are to use them on roasted vegetables, roasted legumes like chickpeas, fish, poultry, and burgers. Um, did I say fish? Yes, I did. This is a great time to plug Maine Fish for Maine Schools. Um, check out our Thursday updates for more information on this awesome program that provides free local fish to schools. And then once you get those fish, experiment with spice blends. It's a great way to use it up. Um, I also wanted to plug a new USDA product, pre-cooked chicken filet that can be seasoned. Um, again, that's another way that you can use spice blends without adding salt. Speaking of USDA foods, use them. They must meet specifications in order to be purchased as USDA foods. Low sodium options are available with product information sheets that list sodium amounts. So the product information sheet I have listed here is for um, turkey, deli breast meat. You can see it includes crediting information, and then it also includes the amount of sodium. Remember there is a daily sodium average for lunch. This is where balance is key. Keep popular items like pizza on the menu while lowering the daily average sodium amount by adding lower sodium meals like scratch made chicken stir fry with whole grain rice. As you can see here, your slice of pepperoni pizza, a standard two uh, meat alternate, two um, whole grain rich slice provides 580 milligrams of sodium. Whereas one of the recipes I found on a website we're gonna talk about in a little bit, um, one cup of chicken stir fry, and when I added one cup of brown rice to that, um, came in at 311 milligrams of sodium. And that is a two meat, um, two whole rich uh, grain item as well. <clears throat> Need more ideas? Check with food vendors on a regular basis to see what lower sodium items are available. USDA works with industry on sodium guidelines and timeline for implementation, or test out simple swamps, swaps. One idea a director shared was serving hamburgers instead of cheeseburgers to reduce the daily sodium by 135 milligrams. There are plenty of resources available to support sodium reduction efforts for National School Lunch Program. First up, recipes. Some recipe resources include Maine DOE's Culinary Classroom website, healthyschoolrecipes.com, the Child Nutrition Recipe Box, and Recipes for Healthy Kids Cookbook for Schools. Here is our Maine DOE Culinary Classroom page. We include recipe videos to try on this page. So when you click on the link, you'll get um, a demonstration by our culinary specialists um, on how to uh, put together these recipes. Healthy School Recipes is another resource for recipes. Here is the chicken stir fry that we mentioned earlier. In addition to the recipe, crediting information and nutrition facts information, including sodium, is available. ICN is another great resource. Their Child Nutrition Recipe Box website has standardized recipes for schools with yield, crediting, and nutrition information. So here is a recipe for barbecued turkey on a roll. It's a USDA recipe for schools. And when you click on this recipe, you'll have ingredient information and you can change the servings, 50 servings, 100 servings, and it will scale up for you. It has step-by-step -step instructions. And then it also has the nutrition information, including the amount of sodium per serving. Um, and it um, has yield and volume information and crediting information as well. So this is a great recipe resource to use. 
Recipes for Healthy Kids is a USDA resource with even more recipes that help incorporate more scratch cooking into your menus. Similarly, when you click on these recipes, you'll get um, not only the um, ingredients needed and the instructions, but you'll get crediting and nutrition facts information as well. Training can be very helpful when incorporating more scratch cooking and reducing sodium in lunch menus. Here is a list of recommended training resources with links. Our DOE event page lists upcoming training opportunities, including hands-on culinary training. On January 18th, there will be a USDA Foods NOI training with a food show in Augusta. ICN has a variety of culinary trainings available on their website, including a new sodium-focused training page. Let's Go offers culinary skills for school meals training, which is a five-day hands-on intensive culinary training for school nutrition professionals. Each year, Maine SNA offers culinary demos and training at their annual conferences. SNA ANC is in Boston this year. I've already mentioned it. I'll mention it again. This conference also offers culinary demos and trainings. As a reminder, training is an allowable use of school food service funds. I would be remiss not to emphasize the upcoming USDA Foods and NOI one-day training. USDA Foods are a great, great way to lower sodium in menus. Think outside of the brown box and register for this training in Augusta on January 18th. ICN offers online training resources through Shaking It Up. The Shaking It Up resource page provides a range of educational resources and training materials, including training worksheets and online courses. You may need grant funds to support the transition to more scratch cooking and the addition of whole foods into menus. There are a variety of grants available to support this process. Main DOE grants include supply chain assistance and local foods grants, which provides funds to purchase domestic or local unprocessed or minimally processed foods. Equipment grants can be used to support scratch cooking efforts. USDA FNS has established the Healthy Meals Incentives Initiative to improve the nutritional quality of school meals through food system transformation, school food authority recognition and technical assistance, the generation and sharing of innovative ideas and tested practices and grants. Full Plates Full Potential has grants available through their website. They will also be offering grants through the USDA School Food System Transformation Challenge subgrants, which is part of the Healthy Meals Incentives. Earlier in this presentation, the proposed updates to the school nutrition standards were mentioned. Here's the link to learn more about the proposed updates. I also wanted to highlight the USDA menu planner for school meals. This is a great resource that has wonderful tools to plan lunches served through the National School Lunch Program. It includes a section on salt and sodium reduction tips, um, including things like focusing on fresh versus processed foods, which we talked about today, um, menu site prepared foods, so cooking from scratch, um, using things like herbs, spices, garlic, vinegar, lemon juice for seasoning rather than sodium, um, using the nutrition facts panel to find sodium amounts so you can plan your menus to make sure that um, your sodium is spread out throughout the week. Um, and it also includes some information on condiments. Here is the link to USDA product information sheets. As mentioned earlier, these sheets list, it, list crediting information and nutrition facts information, including sodium. And you can see that it's organized um, by USDA fruits, USDA grains, meat, meat alternates, vegetables, and other foods for easy navigation. So participants may be wondering, since the sodium um, guidelines have been updated, if you're now required to do nutrient analysis of menus, and the answer is no. You want to focus on food-based menu planning and incorporate as many fresh, from scratch items as possible. You are currently not required to do nutrient analysis as the meal pattern uses food-based standards. Maine DOE uses nutrient analysis if menus flag for sodium risk during an administrative review. If you'd like access to this tool, email us to see how your typical menu may flag. 
Here is what the dietary specification tool looks like that we use as part of our administrative review process. It asks a wide variety of questions about the menu for the school that um, we're reviewing. And we answer these questions based on the frequency that they may occur. Um, for instance, um, only low fat 1% milk or less or fat free unflavored flavored milk is used for consumption of menus. We would answer all always most items, some items never. Um, so we would change the answer to a one. Um, if you were always making sure that your milk met the requirements. And um, that's just an example, but we have a tool that you see here that we go through and we answer questions as part of the administrative review process. And when we get to the end, after answering the questions, we have um, a risk indicator. And if after answering the questions for the menu that we're reviewing, uh, the menu is low risk, we do not need to do nutrient analysis. If it were to flag, we would then do nutrient analysis and we would see the amount of sodium in your menus. Okay, so we covered a lot of content today. I wanted to now open it up to questions. So what questions do you have? We might not have any questions. Okay, um, so we do not have any questions today. Um, if you think of anything after the webinar, feel free to get into contact with Maine Department of Education Child Nutrition with any questions you have, and we'll be sure that we get that information for you. Hope everybody has a great day. Take care.